Chapter 9, Company Liquidations. Big picture, as always, uh, to, worth looking at. A very topical area to be looking at, uh, given the current state of the world. Economy, a problem identified in the past by the examiner has been the fact that many candidates make the mistake of assuming that if a company is in liquidation, it must have been insolvent before that point. This is not true. So do watch out for this, and this diagram hopefully will explain the difference. Company liquidations can be either compulsory or voluntary. Company may or may not be solvent. Creditors voluntary, company will be insolvent. Members voluntary, company must be solvent. It's got to have cash. It's got to be so. Please note what the examiner has said in the past. People get confused between, well, people just assume that if something's in liquidation, it must be insolvent. Not the case. Practical questions the examiner might ask you to determine the order of priority for payments in the event of liquidation. So it's looking at your types of shareholders, charge, fixed charge, floating charge, this sort of thing. Questions are also possible in relation to administration as an alternative to liquidation, which is US Chapter 11. So members voluntary liquidation, key points to note are directors must make a declaration of solvency. So they must actually be solvent and they must declare that and have it audited and checked. They must require a passing of a special resolution, so not an ordinary resolution, but special resolution. The liquidator is appointed by the members the liquidator realises the company assets and reports to final members via their meeting. The liquidator reports to the registrar of companies and the registrar report registers the report and company is dissolved. The alternative is a creditor's voluntary liquidation. Key points to note here are the liquidation begins with the passing of an appropriate resolution. Creditors meeting held and a statement of affairs produced. Liquidator is appointed uh, with, with the will of the creditors prevailing, i.e. they must approve it. The liquidator realises the company assets. The liquidator reports to final members and creditors at that meeting. The liquidator reports to the registrar companies as before. And the registrar re registers the report and company is dissolved. If you get a situation of a compulsory liquidation, I guess the first thing is to think, well, why, is this, why does this happen? Um, the company may or may not be solvent, but having said that, insolvency is the most common cause in practice for winding up of a company. Why would you do it? Well, the company is not able to meet its liabilities is the obvious one, but maybe the company has not started business within 12 months from incorporation, and it should have done. The PLC has failed to obtain a trading certificate within 12 months from incorporation, the reason for it to be liquidated. Perhaps there's a court order that it would be just inequitable to liquidate the company. So the court decides. Key points to note once proceedings to wind up the company have commenced are that the official receiver is appointed as the liquidator. The company employees are automatically dismissed there and then. Any ongoing legal actions against the company are halted and the liquidator takes over power to run the company from the directors, so they lose their executive director powers. Priority for application of assets on liquidation. You do need to learn this list. It could appear as a knowledge or application question. Basically, the order in which people get their money. So, secured creditors go first and get their money on the pot left over. Guess what? The liquidator's fees get paid out second, etc., etc., all the way down to, unfortunately, your surplus goes to shareholders, your ordinary shareholders. Um, preference shareholders will get ahead, even ahead of them. So your ordinary shareholders will be last in the queue for any money, and the chances are often pretty slim they'll get anything. Company administration, well, that's set up to provide a breathing space for a company, which is in financial difficulty, but could 
recover if given time. So the administrator is uh, appointed by, by directors. It could be done by a secure creditor like a bank or it could be taken out with a court order. Now the impact of the administration means that the administrator who's a qualified insolvency practitioner will take over the running of the company from the directors. There is suspension of creditors' rights to seek enforcement of debts. In other words, they have to back off for a period of time. And any petition for winding up is dismissed and no new petitions will be heard in the court of law. So it, as I say, company administration is all about allowing a company time to get its books in order, its strategy sorted out so that it can recover. Now clearly, if after a period of time, the administrator decides that it won't recover, then what we've just covered will likely happen. All documentation of company must clearly state that it is an administration and name the administrator. So paperwork, etc. that comes out. The conduct of the administration, the main procedures are as follows. The administrator prepares his proposals and sends these to all members and creditors. The creditors meeting is held to seek approval of the proposal. If approved by the creditors, the administrator goes ahead with them. If not, the court will decide what to do next. The administrator has 12 months to complete his administration, although this period may be extended with the permission of the court and the creditors themselves. At any time in the 12 month period, the administrator may apply to the court for the discharge, either because he has completed his task or is of the opinion that it is not achievable. Because at the end of the day, the administrator doesn't want to be on the hook themselves for running a business that is now not possible of turning around. Just for your reference, um, in the US it's called Chapter 11, and it's the American equivalent of administration in the UK. They get a 120 day period to formulate and file a plan of reorganisation, and again it'll have to be approved by the company's creditors. During this period there is in fact a moratorium on the company's existing debts and any litigation is suspended. So just like this, just the same as the UK um, administration process. Okay, that's the end of uh, chapter nine. See you in chapter 10.